His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, patronised the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. Upon the arrival of His Majesty's motorcade at the Isa Cultural Hall, accompanied by a group of cavaliers, His Majesty was received by the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Musalam, and the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh. After the national anthem was played, His Majesty headed to the conference hall. Assalamu alaikum. الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة أيها السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته 
يشرفنا أن نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب في حفل افتتاح دور الإنعقاد الثاني من الفصل التشريعي السادس لمجلسي الشورى والنواب وخير ما نبدأ به تلاوة عطرة من القرآن الكريم يتلوها على مسامعنا القارئ علي صلاح عمر The event began with recitation of verses from the Holy Quran أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إني أمرت أن أعبد الله مخلصا له الدين وأمرت لأن أكون أول المسلمين قل إني أخاف إن عصيت ربي عذاب يوم عظيم قل الله أعبد مخلصا له ديني فاعبدوا ما شئتم من دونه قل إن الخاسرين الذين خسروا أنفسهم وأهليهم يوم القيامة ألا ذلك هو الخسران المبين لهم من فوقهم ظلل من النار ومن تحتهم ظلل ذلك يخوف الله به عباده يا عباد فاتقون والذين اجتنبوا الطاغوت أن يعبدوها وأنابوا إلى الله لهم البشرى فبشر عباد الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه أولئك الذين هداهم الله وأولئك هم أولو الألباب صدق الله العظيم يتفضل سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه لإلقاء كلمة لهذه المناسبة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أيها الإخوة والأخوات أعضاء المجلس الوطني الموقرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فعلى بركة الله وبعون منه يسعدنا أن نفتتح دور الإنعقاد الثاني للمجلس الوطني في فصله الحالي متطلعين معكم إلى دورة عمل مثمرة على درب الارتقاء والرخاء لمسيرتنا الوطنية المباركة والمتجهة بكل ثقة وثبات نحو المزيد من التحسين والتطوير والإزدهار بإذنه تعالى وفي هذا الوطن المنفتح على كل فكر نير ورأي مخلص فقد سجلنا معا أهم اللحظات والمواقف التاريخية واستطعنا وفق ما أقرته مصالح البحرين العليا أن نرفع راية الإصلاح والتحديث عالياً 
دون وصاية من أحد لنلبي طموحاتنا وتطلعاتنا المشتركة وبحسب ما أجمعت عليه وتوافقت حوله الإرادة الوطنية ومن الأهمية بمكان أن يواصل مجتمعنا البحريني المعروف بوعيه المدني المتحضر وقراره المستقل في الحفاظ على مكتسباته وبالوقوف صفا واحدا في وجه كل ما يخل بوحدته واستقراره بالإيمان الصادق وبقيم التعايش الإنساني وبفضل من الله وفضل هذه الصحوة الوطنية تبقى بلادنا مرفوعة الرأس عالية القامة مهما بلغت شدة التحديات التي تذللها في كل الأوقات عزيمة أهلها وصلابة إرادتهم وثبات واستقرار مؤسساتها الدستورية ومن بينها المؤسسة القضائية المستقلة في قراراتها والحريصة على أن تتواصل إصلاحاتها وإنجازاتها على الصعيدين القضائي والحقوقي وأننا لماضون يدا بيد بذات القوة والعزم وبروح وطنية لا تعرف إلا النصر والرفعة لوطن الجميع الذي ورثنا أمانة من بنات نهضته الحديثة الذين صدقوا فيما عاهدوا الله عليه وتولوا مسؤولياتهم الوطنية على الوجه الأفضل والتزاما منا بواجب العرفان لهم سنظل نحتفي بذكراهم تكريما لعطائهم رحمهم الله جميعا وأحسن مثواهم الحضور الكريم إنها لمناسبة طيبة لتجديد الاعتزاز بما أنجزت المؤسسة التشريعية التي حرصنا منذ البداية على أن يكون تطورها نابعا من صميم الإرادة الشعبية وسيبقى هذا النموذج الفخور بخصوصيته مستقلا بإرادتكم وغنيا بإسهاماتكم وأمامنا الكثير لإنجازه معكم بعون الله وتوفيقه ولا يفوتنا ونحن نشيد بأداء مجلسنا الوطني أن نثني على جهود السلطة التنفيذية وحرصها اللافت للحفاظ على أعلى مستويات التعاون مع السلطة التشريعية وهو تعاون مثمر وبناء يضع نصب العين مصلحة الوطن والمواطنين كما نخص بالذكر المساعي الحكومية المخلصة بقيادة وتوجيه ولي عهدنا الأمين صاحب السمو الملك الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة لترجمة التطلعات الوطنية بنهج تشاركي للحفاظ على ريادة البحرين التنموية وعلى مكانتها الرفيعة كمنبر للتقارب الفكري والحضاري بين الأديان والثقافات وكوجهة تمتاز بتراثها وطابعها العمراني العريق لمدنها وضواحيها ونوجه هنا بوضع خطة عمل تختص بالمحافظة على الهوية التاريخية والثقافية لمباني ومدن البحرين وسنعمل في سياق ذلك على أحياء قصر عيسى الكبير الذي سنعتمده كأحد المقار الرئيسية لعملنا ومعها الأحياء المعروفة بمدينة المحرق التي نتطلع إلى عودة أهلها لها تكريما لذلك المجد الوطني المشهود في وطن الطيبه والكرامه 
ومن واقع بأن عالمنا لا يستمع إلا لصوت التحالفات القوية والمؤثرة في مسيرة التقدم الحضاري تتواصل مساعينا في توثيق علاقات التقارب والتكامل وتنسيق المواقف على قاعدة راسخة من الانسجام والتشاور والتعاون الأخوي تحت مظلة مجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية وضمن رابطة الجامعة العربية وهو أمر لم ولن نتوقف يوما عن دعمه وخدمة مصالحه تحقيقا لتطلعاته من أجل خير ورفع الدول وشعوب المنطقة وستبقى قضية العرب الأولى أولويتنا الكبرى وموقف مملكة البحرين في دعم وتأييد جهود السلام الشاملة لإيجاد حل عادل للقضية الفلسطينية له موقف ثابت لا حيادة عنه وصولا لحل الدولتين وفق مبادرة السلام العربية وبما يضمن حق الشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق في إقامة دولته المستقلة وعاصمتها القدس الشرقية وأن تكون المساعي السلمية والتهدئة هي الخيار الأوحد في وجه التصعيد القائم لنصل إلى الحل المنشود وختاما نتوجه بكثير من الامتنان لكل جهد وطني مخلص في ساحات العمل وميادين الإنتاج ونخص بالتحية والتقدير قواتنا المسلحة الباسلة بكافة أجهزتها وجميع كوادرها وهي تؤدي الواجب بكل جدارة وشجاعة لحفظ سيادة مملكتنا الغالية وعلو شأنها وستبقى التضحيات الجليلة لشهدائنا الأبرار في ميادين الشرف دفاعا عن الحق ونصرة الأمة خالدة على الدوام في الضمائر والوجدان داعين المولى عز وجل أن يتقمد أرواحهم الطاهرة بواسع رحمته وأن يدخلهم فسيح جنانه إنه سميع مجيب الدعاء والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صاحب الجلالة أيها الحضور الكريم الكلمة الآن لمعالي السيد أحمد بن سلمان لمسلم رئيس مجلس النواب The Speaker of the Representatives Council also delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for opening the second session of the sixth legislative term in which further development and gains for the country and its people will be made with the leadership of His Majesty the King during the march of reform and modernization. He affirmed that Bahrain, with His Majesty's support, overcame all challenges and made remarkable achievements. He affirmed the Legislative Authority's keenness with the cooperation of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in implementation of national legislature and priorities, with the follow-up of the implementation of the government plan for its contributions to making achievements. He affirmed that efforts will continue to implement all the agreements concluded during the issuance of the General State Budget. The Speaker affirmed keenness on continuing to develop the human rights system and supporting national mechanisms in light of the development of the National Institute for Human Rights and issuance of the Royal Order 39 of 2023, which achieved further transparency, independence and impartiality. He highlighted the outcomes of the Alternative Penalties Law and the Open Prisons Programme, as well as the many human rights supporting programmes and initiatives. Amr Salam added that His Majesty the King's address outlined the next stage and affirmed the cultural and historical identity, as well as the Arab and Islamic values of the people of Bahrain. 
He stated that it calls for further efforts and attributes further responsibility for the development of the country and its people. He praised the royal directors in reviving the Isa Grand Palace and approved it as the main headquarters. He affirmed the role of the legislative authority in delivering the civilised message of the kingdom, stand by brothers and friends, enhance relations that are based on trust and respect as well as enhance the values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence in order to achieve further progress and prosperity. He added that Bahrain succeeded in enhancing GCC, Arab and Islamic action, regional and international cooperation, as well as combating hate speech, especially during the IPU meetings that were held in Bahrain under the patronage of His Majesty the King, which aimed to affirm the Kingdom's role in spreading peace, stability and achieve sustainable development goals. He affirmed Bahrain's firm stance towards the Palestinian cause and the establishment of a Palestinian state in accordance with the international legitimacy resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative. He praised the continuous achievements of the Kingdom in all fields and affirmed that the support of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness, as well as the efforts of the people of Bahrain, motivate to make further accomplishments. He recalled with pride the sacrifices of the brave Bahrainis and prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the souls in eternal peace. He pledged allegiance to continue the efforts in order to achieve security, stability, progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty the King. وتحقيق أهداف خطة التعافي الاقتصادي وبرنامج التوازن المالي من أجل دعم الاقتصاد الوطني وتنويع مصادره وخلق فرص العمل النوعية التي تعمل على تحسين المستوى المعيشي للأسرة البحرينية ويحصد ثمارها المجتمع بأكمله وأننا عاقدون العزم على مواصلة الارتقاء بمنظومة حقوق الإنسان ودعم الآليات الوطنية في ظل ما شهدته المؤسسة الوطنية لحقوق الإنسان من تقدم وتطور وصدور الأمر الملكي رقم 39 لسنة 2023 والتعديلات السامية والتي حقق المزيد من الشفافية والاستقلالية والحيادية انسجابا مع مبادئ باريس ذات الصلة بعمل المؤسسات الوطنية فضلا عما حققه تنفيذ قانون العقوبات البديلة برنامج السجون المفتوحة والعديد من البرامج والمبادرات الداعمة لحقوق الإنسان في مجتمع قوامه الحرية والمساواة والعدالة صاحب الجلالة أن لكل طريق نبراس يهتدى به وأن الخطاب السامي لجلالتكم الذي تفضلتم به اليوم جاء بمثابة النبراس الذي أضاء لنا معالم المرحلة المقبلة مؤكدا على هويتنا الثقافية والتاريخية ومرسخا لقيمنا العربية والإسلامية معززا لمبادئنا الحضارية المستقبلية وأن الخطاب السامي لجلالتكم يفتح أمامنا آفاق رحبة تنطلق من رؤية جلالتكم الثاقبة آفاق متزامنة مع الواقع والتطلعات المستقبلية كما يحثنا على المزيد من العطاء والإنجاز ويحملنا مسؤولية أكبر تعمل على ترسيخ الخطوات الثابتة للنهوض بالوطن والمواطنين مشيدين بتوجيهات جلالتكم السامية في إحياء قصر عيسى الكبير واعتماده كأحد المقار الرئيسية للعمل مع الأحياء المعروفة بمدينة المحرق تكريما وتقديرا للمجد الوطني العريق الذي نعتز ونفتخر به صاحب الجلالة أن السلطة التشريعية والتزاما بنهجكم السامي في السعي والحثيث لدعم إرساء الأمن والاستقرار وتعزيز دور الدبلوماسية الإقاثية لمد يد العون والمساعدة لدول وشعوب العالم انطلاقا من الواجب الإنساني تؤكد دعمها لتطوير جاهزية كافة الجهات المختصة لأداء الرسالة الحضارية لمملكة البحرين في الوقوف إلى جانب الأشقاء والأصدقاء وتوثيق العلاقات المتبادلة القائمة على الثقة والاحترام والتقارب والتكامل ونشر وتعزيز قيم ومبادئ التسامح والتعايش السلمي وتحقيق النماء والرخاء وانطلاقا من حرص مملكة البحرين على التمسك بمبادئ العمل الخليجي الواحد والعمل العربي المشترك والتضامن الإسلامي والتعاون الإقليمي والدولي فقد استطاعت الدبلوماسية البرلمانية البحرينية الفعالة أن تبرز دور ومكانة مملكة البحرين خاصة خلال رعاية جلالتكم السامية لاجتماعات الاتحاد البرلماني الدولي 
الذي عقد في مملكة البحرين في شهر مارس الماضي وتبنى الاتحاد دعوة جلالتكم السامية في مكافحة خطاب الكراهية والتعصب والتأكيد على أن السلام هو الخيار الاستراتيجي نحو عالم أكثر أمانا واستقرارا وازدهارا وتحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة مؤكدين موقف مملكة البحرين الثابت في دعم القضية العربية الأولى وتأييد جهود السلام الشامل والعادل وتثبيت حقوق الشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق وإقامة الدولة الفلسطينية وفقا لقرارات الشرعية الدولية ومبادرة السلام العربية من أجل حاضر ومستقبل المنطقة وشعوبها والأجيال القادمة صاحب الجلالة إنما تشهده مملكة البحرين في ظل رعايتكم السامية ودعم ومتابعة سمو ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء في تطور كافة الخدمات واستدامة النهضة في مختلف القطاعات والمجالات التنموية وبجهود وطنية مخلصة من أبناء الوطن جميعا بعزيمة صادقة وطموحات مستقبلية يدفعنا للمزيد من العمل والإنجاز لخير الوطن والمواطنين معربين عن بالغ اعتزازنا بالجهود المتميزة والتضحيات الخالدة لجنودنا البواسل في القوات المسلحة بكافة أجهزتها وكوادرها داعين الله تعالى بالرحمة والمغفرة لشهداء الواجب الوطني المقدس الذين قدموا أرواحهم الغالية ودماءهم الزكية فداء للوطن الغالي ختاما نجدد العهد والولاء لجلالتكم حفظكم الله ورعاكم سائلين المولى عز وجل أن يديم على مملكة البحرين الأمن والأمان والتقدم والازدهار في ظل قيادتكم الحكيمة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The ceremony concluded with the national anthem. His Majesty and His Royal Highness then were bid farewell.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a congratulatory cable from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the National Assembly. His Royal Highness extended sincere congratulations to His Majesty the King on the occasion, lauding the Royal Address, which serves as a roadmap to bring about further growth and development. His Royal Highness also praised the numerous achievements brought under the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King. He pledged that His Majesty the King's sound directives will always be the government's platform of action and an incentive towards more achievements, noting that the government will immediately embark on revamping Maharak City based on the Royal Directives. His Royal Highness praised the fruitful cooperation between the executive and legislative branches, pledging to continue implementing the Royal Visions to promote growth and prosperity and enhance Bahrain's standing at all levels. His Royal Highness renewed loyalty and allegiance to His Majesty the King, pledging to harness all efforts in order to advance the Kingdom at all levels, wishing His Majesty abundant health and happiness. His Majesty the King sent a reply cable of thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in which he expressed appreciation for the good wishes on the occasion, with the loyalty to the reform approach, and praise for the address through which the paths of national development in the next stage were charted, thanks to the efforts of His Royal Highness, the people of Bahrain, and the close partnership between the executive and legislative authorities for the advancement and prosperity of the Kingdom within the framework of the national approach that charts the path to a prosperous future and further civilizational achievements. His Majesty expressed pride in the achievements and remarkable developments made as a result of His Royal Highness's achievements and continuous efforts in all fields, leading government work efficiently and competently to achieve the aspirations and hopes of all. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his sincere sentiments and the readiness to translate visions and directives into government programmes and projects that contribute to achieving the desired goals. He wished His Royal Highness abundant health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks and appreciation from the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Musalam, for His Majesty's opening the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The Speaker praised the contents of His Majesty's speech that aimed to continue a national work and achieve the aspirations of His Majesty in serving the nation and the citizens and achieving progress and prosperity for the Kingdom. He also affirmed that His Majesty's permanent support and assistance to the Council, stemming from his deep belief in the principles and foundations of democracy, which is for the benefit of Bahrain and its people. He wished His Majesty lasting good health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks and appreciation from the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, for His Majesty's opening the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The Chairman praised the contents of His Majesty's address that aimed to continue national work and achieve the aspirations of His Majesty in serving the nation and the citizens and achieving progress and prosperity for the Kingdom. He also affirmed His Majesty's permanent support and assistance to the Council stemming from his deep belief in the principles and foundations of democracy, which is for the benefit of Bahrain and its people. He wished His Majesty lasting good health and happiness. In implementation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's Royal Order, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed government agencies to initiate a plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of the Kingdom's buildings and cities and to launch the Maharak City Development Plan. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the address given by His Majesty the King during the opening ceremony of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives. The address outlined His Majesty's far-reaching visions on the Kingdom's comprehensive development aimed at benefiting Bahraini citizens. His Royal Highness noted the government's commitment to implementing His Majesty the King's Royal Order in line with the best practices and quality standards. He recognised the importance of ongoing cooperation with the legislative authority and of strengthening public and private partnerships. His Royal Highness concluded by highlighting His Majesty the King's directives from the cornerstone of the Kingdom's wide-ranging achievements, adding that public sector professionals continue to perform their duties with determination. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, received a cable of congratulations from the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Al Musalam, following the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives. Al Musalam expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's support and commitment to advancing the Kingdom's development and consolidating the cooperation between executive and legislative authorities under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, following the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives. Al Saleh affirmed his commitment to continuing to strengthen cooperation and coordination with the government and to formulate legislative initiatives that contribute to national achievements and successes under the leadership of His Majesty the King. Asale commended His Royal Highness's support and commitment to consolidating the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities. Asale highlighted the national efforts aimed at consolidating constructive dialogue and enhancing the Kingdom's development and achievements. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Aramehi, affirmed that the contents of the Royal Address, delivered by His Majesty the King at the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term, reflect his wise visions regarding the adoption of the national policies and action plans which benefit the nation and the citizen. She extended thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his directives to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities. The Minister said that this directive reflects the wise leadership's keenness to preserve the cultural and historical character. She stressed that the Ministry will give a joint action plan to implement the Royal Decree a high priority during the next stage. The Minister of Information, Dr Ramzan al Nuemi, affirmed at the address delivered by His Majesty the King during the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term is a beacon for national action during the next phase to continue Bahrain's development and achievements during the prosperous era of His Majesty for the benefit of the nation and citizens. He said that His Majesty's praise of the joint efforts of the executive and legislative authorities and their keenness to increase cooperation is a tribute to all employees of the two authorities and an incentive to exert more efforts. He referred to the Royal Directive to develop an action plan concerned with the preserving of the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities and reviving the Isa Grand Palace and the well-known neighbourhoods in Maharik, which reflects its status to His Majesty and the people of Bahrain in addition to its historical achievements. The Minister expressed appreciation for the Directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to government agencies, stressing that this Directive is a translation of the approach of His Majesty to transform His Majesty's visions into plans that put the interests of the nation and citizens at the forefront of the goals of government work. He stressed that the government, headed by His Royal Highness, is honoured to bear the responsibility of implementing the visions of His Majesty and transforming challenges into promising opportunities and achievements. He pledged to His Majesty and His Royal Highness to harness all national energies to achieve the desired goals. The Chairman of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, BACA, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his royal address at the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. He expressed his pride in His Majesty's directive to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of the buildings and cities of Bahrain. He stated that BACA seeks to revive the city and to highlight its heritage and cultural and pivotal role, which is integrated within its rich and diverse history and reflects its authentic identity linked to its people and their customs. The Governor of Maharek, Salman al Manai, praised the Royal Directors of His Majesty the King during the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities and to work to revive the Grand Isa Palace, which His Majesty will adopt as one of the main headquarters for work and with it the known neighbourhoods of Maharik. He said that the Governorate and its people are honoured by the Royal Directives. 
He added that His Majesty's speech was a source of pleasure for the people of Maharak. The Governor of Maharak Governorate also expressed thanks, gratitude and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his directives to government and agencies to implement His Majesty's order. The Governor praised the efforts of all ministries in supporting and implementing these directives, stressing that the cities and villages of the Governorate are witnessing many development and improvement projects at all levels. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed al expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for inaugurating the second session of the sixth legislative term. He praised the contents of the royal speech and affirmed keenness to achieve the aspirations of His Majesty the King that benefit the kingdom and its people. al also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for attending the ceremony. He praised the support of His Royal Highness and his efforts in enhancing the cooperation between the executive and legislative authority, in line with the aspiration of His Majesty the King and joint national ambitions. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed al Musalim, chaired the first procedural session of the second session of the sixth legislative term. He delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and great gratitude to His Majesty the King for opening of the session. He also expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for enhancing constructive cooperation between the Council and the Government. He also praised the cooperation of the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh. He extended sincere thanks to the Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanem Al Buenin, for his efforts in ensuring cooperation with the Government. The Council then agreed to issue a statement of solidarity with the Palestinian people. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for inaugurating the second session of the sixth legislative term. He praised the contents of the royal speech and affirmed keenness to achieve the aspirations of His Majesty the King that benefits the kingdom and the people. Al Saleh also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for attending the ceremony. He praised the support of His Royal Highness and his efforts in enhancing the cooperation between the executive and legislative authority in line with the aspiration of His Majesty the King and joint national ambitions. The Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh chaired the first procedural session of the second session of the sixth legislative term. Asala expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for opening the session and pride in His Majesty's support for the Legislative Authority, which contributes to a solid foundation for performing the legislative responsibilities and tasks. He also thanked His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for attending the opening ceremony, which affirmed the depth of cooperation and joint coordination between the Legislative and Executive Authorities. Al Saleh notified the members that the Council's office will determine the members of the committee responding to the Royal Speech and coordinate between the members' requests to determine the nomination list for membership in the permanent specific committees. A number of representative Council members hailed the contents of the Royal Address of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. On this occasion, Representative Muhammad Al Alawi affirmed the contents of the Royal Speech are a beacon for the path of goodness and development and the realisation of the aspirations of His Majesty to serve the nation and the citizens in constructive cooperation with the government. For his part, Representative Hamad al Dawai praised the Royal Address, expressing his pride in the Royal Directives to develop an action plan concerned with preserving historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities. Representative Dr Hisham al Ashiri also praised the efforts of the leadership and government in preserving the authentic national heritage by working to revive Isa Grand Palace and adapting it as one of the main headquarters for work. For his part, Representative Abdullah al Dayan described the address of His Majesty the King as comprehensive and objective and stressed that His Majesty's vision comes as a starting point towards a sustainable future built on strong foundations. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with US Senator Johnny Ernst as a delegation comprising members of the US Congress at Rifa Palace. 
His Royal Highness highlighted the long-standing relations between Bahrain and the US, noting the history of bilateral ties and multi-sector collaboration. His Royal Highness emphasised the Kingdom's commitment to advancing bilateral relations to achieve mutual aspirations. He noted the US's pivotal role alongside allies in safeguarding regional security and stability, emphasising the Kingdom's commitment to international efforts towards regional and global development. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of bolstering Bahrain-US partnership through bilateral visits and agreements, such as the recently signed Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement. The agreement forms a cornerstone for joint Bahrain-US wide-ranging cooperation across security, military, advanced technology, trade and investment sectors, benefiting both countries and their people. The importance of supporting efforts to consolidate security, promote peace, development and prosperity for the region and the world for the benefit of all was emphasised. Furthermore, the firm belief that dialogue and diplomatic solutions are imperative for settling regional and international disputes and ensuring the rights of people to peace, development and prosperity was underlined. During the meeting, the latest regional and global developments and opportunities to enhance bilateral relations were discussed. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the former President of Civil Service Bureau, the CSB, Ahmed Zayed Al Zayed, at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness commended Al Zayed's efforts during his tenure as President of the CSB, wishing him success in his future endeavours. He highlighted Bahrain's pride in the national workforce for its contributions to the Kingdom's development across all sectors, adding that it represents a source of inspiration for future generations. His Royal Highness noted the role played by the CSB and government agencies in facilitating success and development for the Kingdom's national workforce. He highlighted the role of the national workforce in improving government work streams and furthering public sector efficiency. For his part, Al Zayed expressed gratitude for the support he had received from His Royal Highness during his tenure, affirming that public service is an ongoing duty and a great honour for all Bahrainis. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the second meeting of the Board of Directors of the Institute of Public Administration. The Deputy Premier stressed the importance of constantly developing the methods of education and training to cope with the goals of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which will benefit national competencies. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah noted that a method should keep abreast with the most up-to-date trends and the best practices in the field of public administration in order to enable the public and private sectors to work in accordance with a unified institutional system based on enhancing outputs and improving the quality of productivity by linking training and professional development with career promotion and development of leadership skills which will boost the national economy and achieve the Kingdom's development aspirations. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah and board members congratulated Sheikh Duaj bin Salman bin Duaj Al Khalifa on the issuance of the Royal Decree, appointing him as President of the Civil Service Bureau, CSB. They also welcomed him to the Institute's board. They commended the efforts exerted by Ahmed Zayed Al Zayed to develop the civil service sector throughout his presidency of the CSB and a membership of the Institute's board. During the meeting, the Cabinet Affairs Minister, Hamad bin Faisal Al Maliki, was elected as Deputy Chairman of the Board of Directors of Institute. The panel also approved the Institute's annual plan for 2024, following the presentation of the Institute Director General and the Institute's Board Member, Sheikh Dr. Rana bin Isa bin Duaj Al Khalifa. It also reviewed the Institute's annual training plan with CSB to determine the training needs of various government entities. The Board of Directors also reviewed the Institute's cooperation with Tamkeen and Kibarat programme, which aims to empower young Bahraini job seekers by developing their learning skills and providing them with practical experience through on-the-job training in private sector institutions. The Deputy Premier and Board members, including ministers and officials, inspected the leadership programmes currently implemented by the Institute for Public and Private Sector Employees. 
While meeting the trainees, uh, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah asserted that the support enjoyed by the Institute and the institutional confidence in its output have expanded its work to include the affiliates of the public and private sectors, both in Bahrain and abroad. The trainees expressed thanks and appreciation to the Deputy Prime Minister for encouraging them, which they said reflects the interests of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in a human resources and the Kingdom's national competencies, so as to constitute effectively and positively to the Kingdom's development process. They also affirmed that they had benefited from the Institute's programmes, which developed their skills and capabilities, commensurate with the professional needs. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs at the Kingdom of Bahrain expressed sympathy and solidarity with the Afghanistan over the devastating earthquake that struck the west of the country, which led to many casualties 